So that's what I want you to look at here in this next part of this process. So um, here's how it's going to go. You'll be in the room with this other person or these other friends, and you're going to say, I'm, you know, I'm taking this course, and I'd like to share with you uh, what I want right now. Right now in my life, this day, this week. Um, and I'm going to ask you, you're going to say this to them, I'm going to ask you, my lovely friends, not to make a, uh, any comment about it, any judgment about it, uh, any prediction about what, what my chances are of getting that or any of that. Any of that. Just, uh, just, share with, uh, just let me share with you uh, uh, what I want. And, and then you'll, you'll tell them. And you'll maybe even lift up your piece of paper and say, in the area of relationships, what I want right now is uh, more closeness with my partner uh, or uh, more space in my relationship or whatever, you know, whatever it might be. What I want right now with regard to my uh, appearance is to lose, you know, eight pounds or, or whatever it might want to, you know, grow a beard, by the way. That's not such, a, not such a weird thing to want. I recall in my life when I wanted to grow a beard. And, uh, and so I had to, that was a, a thing I had to work at because I, I didn't grow beards easily. Facial hair didn't come in well for me. Who cares? It's a personal thing. Who cares? The point is that I'm giving you examples of things you might want. Now, when you finish telling them what you want, what might be fun is if you ask your friend or friends if they'd be willing to share with you, and then they may not be willing to. You know, it's just a process, just a kind of an opportunity to share truths. But what, what, uh, what they might like to tell you about what they would want. And in order to facilitate, then you might give them a, a separate list, not with anything written on it, just the list of the categories. Say, you know, these are the categories that I've, that I've written down. Relationship, parenting, health, sexuality, work, finances, appearance, and so forth. Friends, social life, the world at large, etc. Give them the same list that you've been working from. Hmm? And, uh, and ask them if they'd like to share with you what they would want. The reason, and if there are two or three people, um, it might be even more interesting and more fun. The reason that I'm suggesting this is that uh, you can then compare. It's, it's fun to sit down and, and talk with people, especially people you know well, uh, and see how different uh, or how similar the things that you want are. Now, I said I was going to add a category, and I am. At the bottom of this uh, list, I'd like you to add spirituality. What I want with regard to my spirituality, what I want my spiritual experience to be, what I want my spirituality to feel like, uh, just, just what I want with regard to that. And let your heart speak to you openly. Let your soul speak to you uh, openly about what that is that you really want with regard to your spirituality. Because later on, in a future lesson, uh, we're going to take a look at what you wrote there and see how close we've come and what we need to do to get even closer to your heart's desire with regard to your spirituality. Okay? All right. And, and now the last uh, process in this particular class. Mm, let's see. This is delicate, you know? And I, I'm hoping you can do this process with the other people uh, in the room on day six, if they'll play with you. By the way, I should, have, I should have said earlier than now, when you call them, tell them it's, it's more than just uh, <clears throat> a chat. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's more than just a, uh, <laughs> a little visit. You want to do some, some, some real process work, what we call process work with them. So choose this person or these people carefully uh, and give them a fair warning what they're getting involved in so they really understand that uh, they're not just coming over for, as I said, for a small visit. Um, people who are willing to play with you at this level, yeah? You, you, you'll know who they are. If, and if you don't have anyone like that, uh, sorry. But maybe we can find some before the next seven weeks are out and you'll develop these kinds of friends as well. Yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, so this process is called the waiting game. And it works best with uh, a few other people, or at least this one, one other person that you've been working with. The waiting game 
is your chance to identify and to recognize, because the, the, uh, the uh, step one here, the whole, the whole topic of this lesson is recognition. And you need to recognize and to identify how long am I willing to wait for these things. So we're going to ask you to, to pick up your chart again that you made for the uh, I want process, what I want right now. This is what I want right now. Not a year from today, but I, I need these things right now. I need this kind of a change in my relationship, this kind of change in my appearance, this kind of change at work. Uh, you know, or you might have, again, I want to mention, you might have in some of these categories, I want exactly what I have right now. I don't, I don't need anything to change. This, this particular category is perfect. Most of us will want to see a change in at least one or two of these eight or 10 or 12 uh, categories here. So again, be honest about that. Now, the waiting game is a column. You're going to make a new column here to the far, uh, to the far uh, right uh, of, uh, is that right? Yeah, to the, no, to the far left, to the far left. Yeah, so, so you're going to make another column here to the far left. And on the top of that column on the far left, you're going to uh, label it how long I'm willing to wait. Wow, you know, this is transformational. Be careful with this one because this is a powerful one. This is the one that will tell your mind what your soul is willing to, how can I use the word without getting into dangerous territory, tolerate. What you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate about all of these areas of your life beyond a certain point. See? So how long I'm willing to wait for that raise at work or that recognition at the office or how long I'm willing to wait for that increased closeness or that shift of the um, at atmosphere and the environment with, uh, with my uh, relationship with my significant other or how long I'm willing to wait for that change in my appearance to lose those eight pounds or, or whatever it might be. And I, I need you to be as honest with yourself as you possibly can be. So this is uh, another assignment that you can do at the same time that you do uh, the I want process. This is the waiting game. And you can also add this to day six. It, hopefully you can do it with uh, the people in the room because you can ask them how long they're willing to wait for the things that they're saying to you that they want. And if you do this process by yourself, by the way, I, at, at the beginning I said you can do the I want process by yourself, and you can. If you do it by yourself, fair enough, it's okay. But be as candid as you possibly can be with yourself, okay? How long am I willing to wait? And, and you know what, if you want to do a little twist on this, a little twist on this, put a column in between. See, here's the first column is all the categories. And I said over here on the far left, how long I'm willing to wait. In the middle, how long I've waited so far. I'd like you to write a column in the middle, how long I've waited so far. See, how long have I waited already for this raise or for this recognition at work? How long have I waited already for my relationship to bring me more closeness? How long have I waited already to take off these seven pounds or these eight pounds? How long have I waited already for this to occur? I want you to identify that and how long you're willing to wait, how long, how much further, how much longer you're willing to wait. And I want you to, here's the, uh, the key of how this last process works. If I had you in the room with me, I'd be telling you all this live in the room. I need you to write down in that last column on the far left, a, uh, actually, as you're looking at the paper, it's on the far right, isn't it? Yeah, because if you're looking at the paper, it's on the far right. This is being the left, that being the right. See, I, I'm all mixed up. Forget about me. I'm looking at a mirror. But you know what I'm, at the other, at the other end of the paper, <laughs> left, right, who the heck knows, knows what's, well, I don't even know my, my left or my right. But what I want you to uh, put down there is a date certain. Yeah? Okay. So this is what I'm suggesting to you. Don't just say how long I'm willing to wait, oh, six months, you know, three days, or whatever it might. I'm asking you to put a date certain in there. That is, whatever day today is that you're watching this, I'm inviting you, asking you, and requesting that you write down an absolute date certain. Put down September 12th, you know, August 3rd. 
October 13th, whatever the date is, make yourself decide on a date. And that way, and then circle that date on the calendar, by the way. Go to your calendar and circle that date so that you can be uh, conscious, huh? Conscious, aware of the decision you made, of the choice you made, of the agreement that you made with yourself. And in many of these categories, you're going to have to ask a fundamental question. How much good can I accept? And the second fundamental question, a second question you're going to have to ask yourself is this. And this, this by the way, is one of the most powerful and important questions that Conversations with God placed before me in the very early portion of that dialogue. Do I have a right to be happy? That's a question that every human being has to ask themselves at some point in their life with regard to some aspect of their life experience. Do I have a right to be happy? Remember the name of this program. Remember the title that we've given to this course. Your life as God. Opening to the expression of divinity as you. If you are going to experience yourself as that which is divine, as an expression of divinity, you're going to have to claim certain things. You're going to have to claim your happiness, and you're going to have to claim that it's all right for you to claim your happiness. 